So getting into the head of a person, it's everyone's dream, isn't it? Um, but getting into the head of an audience is, is really, really hard. Um, but we can borrow the work of one company, Google, um, to help us simplify what is in a parent's mind whenever they hear from a school. Um, now that's quite a bold claim, but just go with me for a minute or two here because it is backed up. Um, Google have spent decades analysing search data. It's the core of their business and it's what makes their success in the future um, uh, highly likely. It's the analysis of countless billions of people searching. Um, and they've created a framework that they use to understand what people are trying to do when they use search. They call it intent and it's based on um, 20, 25 years worth of data, and they've from that developed a schema, a schema of human intent. And there are four modes of intent. They've boiled the whole of human behavior down to these four things, which is a slightly scary thought. Um, intent can be informational, which means that somebody wants to find some information in general. It can be navigational, that they want to find something specific when they go to search. It can be transactional, which means that somebody wants to do something, and in the context of Google, that probably means buy something, which is why they say transactional. And then it can be investigational, which means that somebody wants to find something out about something specific, but it's in order that they can later make a decision better or do something more effectively. But we can use this to think about how parents are minded to respond to our communication too. Now for us, because our audience is a captive audience in that parents uh, are tied to us for a prolonged period of time, uh, we can also think about how we can change their intent by our behavior. So let me explain that. So in our parent context, we can think of um, this intent, informational intent, as a parent who is generally receptive to hearing from us because we communicate regularly and consistently. And in that state, when a parent receives something from us, the question that probably arises in their mind is something like, does this look interesting? Now, what, what's really important about that is that we can use that question as a guide to us if we can preempt the, that question with an answer built into the beginning probably of our communication in the context of email it'll be the subject line perhaps or the first sentence if we can answer that question there then we will likely strike a, a chord with a parent who may have informational intent that means that at least when they see an email from us they're thinking there may be some information i'm interested in here navigational intent so imagine our parents already have some knowledge about something um, that we have announced or maybe an event that's coming up and now that they some of those parents will be actively looking for more information about it all they want to know is when they receive an email from us will i find any more information about that event in this email so do i know why this email is relevant to me so again if we can answer that question in the way we communicate we stand ourselves in a good stead of striking a chord with a parent who has navigation intent um, if the parent has a transaction intent, so let's say a parent has now made a conscious decision to do something, maybe it's to give up their time to help an event. Well, that's a big thing for a parent to do, a busy parent to do. So when we next mention that event in a communication, it, we need to do it in such a way that it contains urgency because we know that we may only get one chance to capture that parent while they're so motivated. So we've got to make sure that we think about urgency um, uh, in our communication so it uh, gives parents the incentive to act now. And the last um, form of intent, investigational. Some parents will gradually become more generally engaged with school life and that becomes an incredibly valuable resource to a school. So we need to think about what we could do to motivate a parent to convert that latent intent, uh, which is to be participatory, into action. So the question therefore in our communication to parents that we can strike on that level is, does this communication resonate with me? Is there something in it that I really just that it appeals to me and make me want to do something about it. So when it comes to parents, you can see that these intents form a, a sort of a ladder. And it's our objective, one of our objectives is, is to move parents up that ladder. The, the higher up that ladder they are, the more valuable they become as members of our school community. But it is also worth noting that some parents aren't on that ladder. There is a subset of parents who aren't even generally receptive to hearing from us. Those are the parents who never respond to anything and never turn up to anything. And it's really essential to think if our objective is to move parents up that ladder, we also must think about the interventions that we're going to need to get those parents onto that ladder um, so that we have uh, an engaged, even the beginnings of an engaged community.